I have sleepless nights over Halloween. You have no you idea. Know. There is no rehearsal. I can't rehearse this. It's only on the day. I always hope that it works out. Hi, I'm Heidi Klum, and I'm just gonna run through some of my Halloween moments. Why don't we? So the first one I have here, which was actually my very, very first um, Halloween party, and I'm just Heidi. And because Heidi is from Germany and from the mountains, so I thought it would be good to do a dirndl, but not a traditional dirndl. So I had like a little bit more of a patent leather dirndl. And in those days, I still did my hair and makeup by myself. So that's why it doesn't look as fabulous. <laughs> this was my second one, and that was a Lady Godiva. So I always um, try to find things that people naturally wouldn't do. You know, most people do like nurses or police officers or... But I was always looking for something that I hadn't seen. And so I was Lady Godiva. Came on a horse, obviously. Yeah, the police horse from New York City. Because also I love to do the parties in New York City because I've done one here in LA once. People go home at 10, 11 o'clock. I'm like, are you kidding me? I've just spent, I don't know, 12 hours in hair and makeup and you just leave at 11? No, can't do that. Then I wanted to come from space, so I was um, an alien. I had a grill made, that was cool. Like a real gold grill. I went to the dentist, I still have it. Obviously, because I'm a hoarder and I keep everything. <laughs> I came out of a spaceship. That was cool. But every year it kind of went crazier and crazier because over the years I got to meet more and more people who actually do special effects. I was like, think, why didn't I think of this before? Then I wanted to be a witch, a red witch, and I thought it would be cool to have a skeleton on my back. And I was trying to find a skeleton everywhere. And I actually went to one of those doctors, MD kind of, where you get all the supplies. And I got like a real skeleton that you get at the doctor. It was so heavy. It was on my back all night. So I'm like carrying this skeleton. And then we had, um, I had a harness on and I wanted to fly in over the people. So I was rigged from the ceiling and then I was flying over all the people like, happy Halloween <laughs> on my broom with a skeleton on my back. Here I'm pregnant, and Seal was uh, Eve. <laughs> he gave me five minutes to do his makeup. His makeup is not on point, but he only gave me five minutes, otherwise it would have been better. I did all that makeup myself. So, you know, all the green and making all the, m making me look like a snake, because I love painting. And so, yeah, I'm like nine months pregnant in here. And then because I just had my baby, <laughs> I wanted to be skinny. So I wanted to be in a cat suit and to be a cat. And I had like a cute little tag that said, you know, if I'm lost and you find me, return to seal. Here, it was just after I had a baby too. I'm a crow. I was very sad when I got to the red carpet because I was like, the background is black. <laughs> because you can't even see me. I was like, because the background is never black, but you know, those moments happen and then you get smarter. Now I work on the background too. You know, since then I do the step and repeat, the carpet, everything. <laughs> then I wanted to be larger than life. This doesn't do the costume any justice, this photo, because you really need a person next to me. I learned um, to walk on stilts. So I actually have stilts on, like my feet, they end right here. So I really, I was walking for days in my backyard, learning how to walk on these stilts. It was amazing though, because I was so tall and I could just tower over everyone and I could see everything. It was amazing. It wasn't so amazing when I had a few drinks. <laughs> So I was like swaying and everyone was just holding me up. And then I met Bill Corso. He is no joke. Bill Corso, he has done all these amazing movies, special effects and stuff like that. And I remember many, many years ago, there was this um, show, it was called Body Works, where um, you see, you know, 
humans without their skin. So you just see the muscles and all of this stuff. And I thought this was so cool and I wanted to be that. I was basically me without skin and hair. And I thought it would be a really cool entrance to come in on a gurney. It was so morbid because I was on this gurney and I had two doctors on either side that were wheeling me in. And you know, I was just like laying under this sheet and then they took the sheet off and I was just laying there. And I don't know, I loved it. Now comes one of my favorites. I think I turned 40 and everyone was like, oh my God, so you're 40 already. That's kind of old, no? Are you sure you still want to go modeling? And so I thought, yeah, 40, that's old. Old, I want to be old. So then I turned myself into like a 90 year old person. And so I found like an old Chanel dress, old uh, Chanel shoes. I wanted to be a chic old lady. And I mean, every part of my skin that you could see, they had to age. I mean, the amount of layers, the amount of spots, I guess you get, obviously I see them happening, they're coming. You know, you have white spots, you have brown spots, you have red spots. My teeth were yellow. I mean, the work is so good. My hair, everything, I mean, kudos to all of this. And then I turned myself into a butterfly, which I also love. And I love this team too that I had here. You know, this is all hand painted, these wings. It's actually the same people who did the Victoria's Secret wings. And so I met them obviously because I got to wear the wings so many times. And I said, no, I wanna be a butterfly. So they made that for me. Yeah, and my face was really difficult because it was all glowing. So it looks really cool from the outside, but really from the inside, I had gigantic batteries like right next to my eyes. So they were really bugging me. <laughs> but also otherwise my eyes could have not glowed. And then I wanted to be the biggest sex symbol on the planet, which is Jessica Rabbit. This was very hard because they had to create a lid that I don't have. So they had to cast my face again, which is also very claustrophobic. You know, you only have straws in your nostrils. I think some chunk of my own skin went off by ripping this off because, you know, this takes two hours to take this off. And you know, you have, it's kind of like nail polish remover and they chisel away and they put a little bit more and then they chisel away and rip a little bit. So a little piece of my own came off. And then why not clone me? <laughs> so I had to find five girls that have my body, my height. So I went to a modeling agency and found these five girls that were willing to be me for Halloween and not to see their face. <laughs> you know, because normally as a model, you want to be seen. That's the whole point of being a model also. You know, you want, you want your face out there. And you know, they were out there having my face stuck on them. So it's not easy to find someone having to go through all the prosthetics and it's hard to put my face on someone else's face because they all have different features. The nose can be smaller or bigger or the cheeks wider, or smaller, and my face has to fit on their face. So that was very hard to do. We had a good time. But they were like, oh my God, can't believe you glue all this stuff on your face. I'm like, this is just the face. I've had my whole entire body glued on with this. And then, because I love to dance, I've danced my whole life. I wanted to do the thriller dance and I wanted to be the werewolf. This also, it is so good that you can't even see how good it is actually. Because it looks almost like it's in the head that you could just stick on when you see it in a photo. But when you see me really from that night, everything moves. When I'm speaking, you know, everything is moving. It's not just like a face and you just see eyes looking out of those holes, you know? Like it's all glued on, it's done so well, it's, amazing and then I had a breastplate and then I had to learn this dance. I had about 15 dancers and we came down the street in Manhattan to Thriller and that was thrilling for me to do that. You know we had like smoke, it was like Manhattan and we're like doing the Thriller dance. And then I took the jacket off and everything, I was bareback and I just had this hairy breastplate of this thing, that was funny and I always wanted to be Fiona and Shrek. I just never found a crazy enough person that wants to do Shrek with me <laughs> until I met Tom. 
<laughs> and Tom is like, okay, yes, I love to do Shrek with you. And I'm like, you say that? No. He was dying in this thing because again, prosthetics on the face and then also Shrek is big. So it is super heavy and in the club it is super hot. Plus it's hours of putting this stuff on, hours. And then this was also like, this was crazy. This was probably the most hours in terms of gluing things on. I don't even know how I survived to be honest with you because I had prosthetics everywhere. My idea for this was for people to actually see the process. So I told people that I'm going to be on this street, in this house, in this window all day, and you can come by and watch this evolve. So I started, I don't know, at 9 a.m. in the morning until <laughs> whenever I went to the party, maybe at like nine or 10 o'clock at night, and I would just sit in the window and they would do all this stuff on me because I wanted people to see the art behind it. I wanted people to see you know, the magic and what they do. So all this was insane. I love it. Oh, and here's my worm. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I wanted to do interviews on the floor because I thought it was comical. It just made me so happy, all these memes and all these funny things that happened from this because ultimately that's what I want at the end. You know, I want people to smile when they see it or they go, wow, this is crazy. I've never seen something like this. In the beginning, when I was just pushing the idea um, to everyone, they were like, you should think of something else. I'm kind of having the same moment again with this year. Everyone was like, can we have a plan B? I'm not good with plan B. My goal is to not let any of my Halloween fans down. See you on Halloween. Whoa.